Hello everyone and welcome to the Conscious Co-Parenting Institute's holiday Thanksgiving Facebook Live. I'm Dorsey Pruder, the CEO and founder of the Conscious Co-Parenting Institute and I'm coming to you live today with my two beautiful daughters, Savannah and Jensen. And they have so graciously offered to come on a Facebook Live for you guys today and to share some insights and tips and tools and ways to communicate with your uh, alienated children or adult alienated children during the holidays or children of divorce and uh, children that deal with conflict or children that are just dealing with two separate homes. And so I want to give my girls a beautiful, warm, conscious co-parenting Facebook Live welcome. Our dogs are also in the house today and one of my team members who's monitoring. So we're going to be answering questions that you guys might have and um, sharing some information if you don't have questions. So I'm going to have uh, Savannah, who's my eldest child, share a little bit about um, herself, just briefly who she is and where she's at in life, and then Jensen, my youngest, and then we'll dive into talking about divorce, children of divorce, communicating during the holidays, and really how to create a conscious co-parenting situation during the holidays. And don't worry, even if your ex is narcissistic or borderline or not labeled or high conflict or whatever, these things work with all families, even those families dealing with really high conflict situations. So with that being said, Savannah, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, uh, me and your sweet little sister today on the Facebook Live. Share with our audience a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you're doing these days, and um, this, by the way, was Savannah's idea to do this Facebook Live. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I am Savannah. I am currently 22, as some of you guys got in the email, but, um, so I am currently in grad school in North Carolina, and I just finished up my undergrad in May, also doing that four years in North Carolina, so being apart from my mom and being apart out of the state and across the country from her. And, um, yeah, I currently now work for my mom's company as well. Yeah, so she's doing some um, part-time stuff. She's managing some of our social media. So some of the new social media campaigns and things that we're doing are Savannah's idea and uh, including this Facebook Live, bringing my girls on. And, and she's doing a really great job in working with my team and getting some job experiences. And God love her, she works for her mommy, which is probably not a lot of fun. Um, there's a layer in between us, though. I'm trying to you know, make it so I don't parent and boss her. And Currently a physical layer. <laughs> <laughs> and our little uh, referee mediator, Jensen. So, oh yeah, you are a referee. That's perfect. Perfect. So Jensen, why don't you tell um, our Facebook audience a little bit about yourself? Where are you at? How old are you? What are you up to these days? Hi, I'm Jensen. I'm 20 years old. I'm currently an illustration student at Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, <laughs> I'm pursuing a degree, hopefully to become a children's book illustrator. Um, cool. I, really do a lot of work um, artistically that emphasizes the inner child and I developed that idea for working for my mom's company after I graduated from high school. I took a gap year and worked for a conscious co-parenting institute and really developed the idea that it's okay to um, be different and everyone is the same on the inside. Oh wise little old souls I have here in my household. <laughs> Very nice. I didn't even know that, so that's really cool. Jensen has just started a, um, she just did a project, and um, I wrote an outline for a children's book series probably 20 years ago, and she uh, created some illustrations, and we were talking about that was an inspiration. She said that those illustrations were inspired by that book series, so maybe a project coming out that we, the three of us, get to work on together, which is very exciting. So uh, um, this Facebook Live is really to help parents that are struggling with, struggling with alienation during the holidays or dealing with some conflict. And um, why don't you share with the Facebook audience, with the parents that are watching, what it was like for the two of you. We'll start with you, Savannah, when dad and I divorced. And just so you know, those of you who don't know, Savannah's dad and I divorced when they were two and four. Um, we divorced on, uh, we separated on January 3rd, so it was right after the holidays, and um, you didn't, yeah, it was January 3rd, and, um, but they were two and four, so of course they wouldn't remember that, and uh, why don't you share some of the things that worked really well for you, especially in the earlier years, and really that we've done well for 20 years. 
go ahead. Savannah, you want to start? Yeah. Um, I think something that worked really well. So obviously she said they got divorced when I was four years old. So obviously I don't remember the, like the very beginning, but what I do always remember and what I always see pictures of are they were very inclusive with each other. So sometimes my mom would be at my dad's house for Thanksgiving and sometimes my dad would come over to my mom's or we would spend it with like my mom's siblings would also come over to my dad's, something like that, like a big family gathering rather than just us with one parent. So um, just always trying to integrate each other, I think was something you guys did really well. And I think obviously that's not a luxury that a lot of people have, but that was something that I really appreciated you guys did for us. So I have a question. Did you know like dad and I would be fighting and stuff like that during those holiday things and there would be conflict between the two of us? No. No, that was never a concern. No. Yeah. No. No. But there was. So one of the things that's really important as you're going through this process, and those of you that are in really high conflict situations, there was a lot of conflict between their dad and I, and it was really important to make sure that they were protected from that conflict and not brought into the middle of it. And, you know, we didn't do it perfectly, neither one of us. I know I make him bananas and vice versa. And sometimes we can't control that and um, expressing that with the children. And, you know, you probably heard me say a lot of times, bad mouthing. So, you know, a lot of people in the alienation space will say, well, bad mouthing is alienation and not necessarily because people bad mouth each other anyway. So you don't want to bad mouth your ex, but sometimes it's human nature to say things when you're, when you're crazy and, or angry with the other parent and being very mindful of that, but also understanding that you can take responsibility for things that you've said, especially in front of your children, don't want to make a habit of it, right? So I, I think that, um, I'll speak for myself, I've done a pretty good job of that when I've made mistakes to say, you know, I shouldn't have said that or I was really pissed and, um, and that's still no excuse. So even if you do something that's negative, it's really important to take responsibility for your words and actions so that it doesn't negatively impact the children because um, things that you say about the other parent, kids internalize about themselves, even unconsciously, probably mostly unconsciously, because they're half of both of you. And so even if you loathe and despise the other parent, it's important to help the children see positive and negative in both parents, but also that you're talking about the other parent in a positive light as well. Even if something negative is happening, you can talk about negative things and still create something that's positive for the children. What was the best part about um, those shared holidays for you guys? Um, I think it's always special when you obviously want to be with your whole family mm -hmm. for the holidays. And I think it was really special for us to kind of still have that feeling and kind of that experience, given what was happening behind the scenes or mm -hmm. our parents being separated. Mm -hmm. That wasn't every year, so what's yeah. it like um, when you go back and forth? Like when, when we moved out here and um, the holidays were truly split, what was that like? How's that? I mean, we're kind of still doing it now. Yeah, <laughs> I think, um, so I was the first one to go to college. I'm two years older, so Jensen was still under a like custody plan. So our parents mm -hmm. have 50-50 custody, so Jensen's were still mandated of where she spends each holiday, so they alternated. So when I went to college and I aged out, when I turned 18, I still would mainly follow Jensen's schedule and mainly <laughs> follow where she was because also moving out for college, I was also away from my sister. So we just kind of have always kind of maintained staying together mm -hmm. throughout a lot of the holidays. And even though now both of us are aged out, we've kind of still kept on that every other year kind of thing. And normally we do, whoever has you for Thanksgiving doesn't get you for Christmas. You go to the other parent for Christmas. Right. And then the other parent gets you the day after Christmas. Yeah, and we've done that for 20 years, so yep. 20, 18 years. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> 20, 18 years. <laughs> Feels like longer, but a lifetime, pretty much their entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, what are some ways that um, if you were, if there were um, some alienated kids watching this, maybe some young adults or some kids that were having some difficulty with one of their parents, what are some things, what's, what's some advice you could give for the young people watching this so that they can either reconnect or stay connected with a parent even if they're angry with that parent. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that the conflict that's between your parents, while they might be arguing about you, it's not about you. Um, and it's really important to have time with yourself to reflect on 
the conversations that are being had that might not necessarily involve you, but you're a part of. Um, and just knowing that no matter what, your parents want you because they love you, um, and that won't change even if there's an argument. Good. Do you have any, anything to add to that? Yeah, I would just also say, like, remember that your parents are human just like you are. Mm. So I know everyone said something that they regret saying. Like, I'm sure I've said some things to Jensen that I definitely regret saying. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still sisters. We're still <laughs> so just remember that your parents also deserve that kind of grace of, like, mm. you forgiving them for what they say. And especially if people are heated and they're upset or emotions are contagious too. So like, don't hold one thing they said against them. Mm -hmm. Or just remember that they're also human and they're just like you. And I think when you're little, you kind of don't realize that. Yeah. Until you get older and you're just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> What's it like to be in a blended family? So I'm remarried, I got remarried mm, nine years ago. And um, what's it like to be in a blended family. So we also have, I have a stepdaughter who's 23 and a stepson who's 18. So you guys are kind of in the middle and um, they're all about the same age. So what's it like during the holidays? What's, what was it like early on? Um, what's it like now? Like what's in perspective now? <laughs> mm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, it can be messy <laughs> because there are outside influences obviously on both sides. Um, I don't know. I think I my advice would be if you have step siblings, just try to be friends with them, um, because having friends during the holidays, especially now when we can't really see um, friends that we would normally be spending time with mm -hmm. around Christmas time, uh, make friends with the people who are in your life because they're in your life for a reason and they're probably not going anywhere so you might want to try to make an effort to be pals <laughs> yeah good advice <laughs> i would say also just like look at find what they're interested in like mm -hmm. i know jensen and i always team up to give our stepbrother a present mm -hmm. so we put our money together so we can get him something normally really cool and i feel like year after year he's always really loved what we gave him so i think that that's always really cool to kind of share that and although that's like kind of a gift kind of moment of showing him love i think that's like Kind of like goes into like the love languages in that mm -hmm. way like we give gifts to him to kind of show him that we're here and we support him right awesome so one of the comments was uh we need microphones on your daughters are you saying um, i'm loud are you, are you saying i'm yelling no so speak up girls um sorry <laughs> so that's okay um uh was there any jealousy or ha, is there any jealousy like between the step siblings like christmas morning or anything like that What's, not for me i don't think so Okay. I think the only, like, sometimes it is weird because sometimes it's just me and Jensen on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I know it's literally just our stepbrother. Like, he wakes up with no siblings on Christmas morning sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, the different dynamics from year to year can always kind of change depending on who actually spent the night here on Christmas Eve <laughs> yeah. and who wakes up here in the morning. Right. So that just always kind of has differed across, like, the nine years. And I don't think any two years have ever been the same because mm -hmm. of our schedules alternating. Yeah. I would say... um we obviously come from a place where our parents are very good at communicating, so, hmm. well, <laughs> no, I mean, there's never any barrier between uh, oh, step-siblings, like, we're all mm -hmm. equals, right. um, so there's really never any jealousy, we're all sort of the same, even though we're loved differently, um, there's still, like, an even playing field, there's never any conflict with that hmm. um loved differently you mean because you have different love languages mm -hmm. excellent I've trained her well um, <laughs> um okay so what can you um share with parents that they could do to make it easier for their children that are experiencing alienation. So most of the people that would be watching this would be targeted parents. So, you know, the chosen parents that I, I so lovingly call you guys, the, the parent that the child is choosing to help lead the family out of the pathology. And so what's something that you would say from a child's perspective that these parents could do to really help their kids fold back in? I think one just I know my mom always says like show up and just text and just like kind of show that you're always there 
So on Christmas morning, make sure you text them Merry Christmas if that's what you celebrate, or if you celebrate Hanukkah, text them on those days. Thanksgiving, say, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you coming into this world, like something like that, or I'm grateful for this memory that we've shared in the past. So I guess like kind of pulling back even from when they're younger, because I know I'm nostalgic. I know like a lot of kids are. So when you talk about the past, it's like, oh, I remember that too. So just kind of like doing that too, but also just like constantly messaging them. Like I know something that our stepdad does, like even still while we're in college, is <laughs> he emails us articles all the time. <laughs> All the time. So our stepdad is not the best, like, texter, and he doesn't no. really call or anything like that. But, like, he's in constant communication because he just sends us articles all the time. That's true. So that's the way that he chooses to communicate with us. And we know that he's there and he supports us because he's thinking of us when he sends us things. Mm -hmm. He'll be like, this reminded me of you, or you should read this, something like that. So even just little things like that, and even when they do open back up and they do come back to you, they'll be able to go look back through that so even if they don't look at it that day maybe in the past or in the future they'll go back so I want to dovetail on something she said which was specificity around showing your kids appreciation so um, she said you know on Thanksgiving or, or anytime you know expressing appreciation for your children be specific in your appreciation you know five years ago when you did XYZ I felt you know loved or I felt cherished or I, I felt whatever um, and um, the reason that you felt that way and you know so thank you so much for showing up in the world that way being spe specific around appreciation is one of the tools that we teach in the high road and in conscious ways for families is something that's really really important is it's not like hey thanks it's like hey when you did this it really impacted me this way I felt amazing or I felt proud or, or um, loved and cherished and held by you, whatever that is, right? Would it be authentic, but be specific and say thank you about that? Why did it make you feel that way? I think even with your spouse and your children and friends and stuff, specificity around appreciation. I'm so glad you said that, sweetie, sweetie, because um, I love to see my uh, skills in action and through my own children and what a, what a beautiful mirror to, to see that because that is really, really important gratitude and specific appreciation is really really powerful it really allows the other person who's receiving it to really receive it it also is really powerful for the giver too anchoring back into those positive feelings so yeah. thank you for sharing that. that's I, really powerful i also just want to add like don't say anything negative at all like yeah. don't bring up anything negative that's happened in the past even if that's what you're thinking of, or even if that's the reason you can't see them on that day or something like that, don't say that to them. Don't give them a reason not to respond. Mm -hmm. Right. That's actually very, very good. Um, what were you gonna say, sweetie? Um, no matter how they're acting, uh, always react with love hmm. is my advice. Oh, that's really sweet. What does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> um, a child is saying I don't want to spend this day with you you're a terrible person I don't want to spend my time with you you're not worth it um, just respond in a very neutral way make sure that they know that they're getting love back even if they're not sending it oh yeah. excellent so what I heard you say Jensen is love your children because of who you are not by how they're behaving mm -hmm. is that the message I'm hearing mm -hmm. excellent I think you guys may have heard that from me before Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right. So unconditional love oftentimes is a very lonely one way street on the high road, which can feel painful and stressful at times. But when you anchor into the authenticity of unconditional love within your own heart, you love your children because of who you are, not because of how they're behaving. I always think a really great example is when a baby's learning to walk. We don't say when the baby falls down, oh, my God, you're an imbecile. You're never going to walk. Right. We want to encourage them. So encouraging even alienated children or children that are being rejecting or rude and disrespectful by leading with unconditional love is really, really, really a powerful tool. All these things um, are simple and yet they can be complex and difficult until they aren't. And you've probably heard me say this a lot. You know, it's hard until it isn't and then it's so easy. When we're in this family dynamic, we oftentimes forget who we are and we get caught up in reacting to things and and I've done it and they've done it and we all do it's human nature and 
it's just important to circle back and clean stuff up, you know, take responsibility for things. And if you've done something that you should apologize for, apologize for that. But if you're being accused of something that you didn't do, don't apologize for things that aren't real. We, we're not here to reinforce delusions in children. And um, yeah, so um, Savannah said something else I wanna talk about, which is her stepdad. So I think it's important that those of you that are in blended families, because I'm in a blended family, um, what was it like to have really a dad and a stepdad? Because Rob's been around a long time. And um, so what was that like? How different are they or similar? And what, you know, what, what was it like to have two dads, really, two, a stepdad and a dad, mm -hmm. two fathers in your life? Yeah. Yeah, I think something I always tell people is like, whenever I'm like my parents, I'm like, I have three parents. Mm -hmm. Which sounds a little weird sometimes. <laughs> like, I, got, I got three of them. So, but I think it's, it doesn't hurt you ever to have a bonus parent and to have someone else brought into your life to really give you guidance. And I think there is a balance in finding a role. And I think our stepdad has done a really good job with us and just connecting with us on different things. And I don't know. I think the stepdad gets to play kind of more of like a cheerleader kind of character and gets to like mm -hmm. spoil you a little bit more than like a normal parent would. So, like, when they were first starting to date and, like, when he first, like, came into our life, like, we went to Starbucks all the time. We always, like, got some <laughs> We treat. still do. Yeah, we still do. But that was, like, our thing when we were younger. Rob would yeah. take us to Starbucks. And uh -huh. that was, like, we loved going to Starbucks with Rob. We always wanted to go spend extra time with him because he also bought us a frappuccino. <laughs> I blame Rob for my early onset caffeine addiction. That's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. Yeah, but I think just having someone else there to kind of run your things by or even, like, kind of back you up in anything or mm -hmm. even, like, it's, like, I don't know, you can, like, team up with them and be, like, we both want to do this. Mm -hmm. Let's go convince mom. Got <laughs> it. Like you that. were doing that. So what you're saying is you were working with Rob, <laughs> conspiring against me to get stuff that you want. Not Got conspiring it. Against I me. see. I see what's going on here. Now the truth is out. So let's talk a little bit deeper into <laughs> having... Um, uh, a stepsister who was really not in our lives for the first few years of uh, Rob and I together and, and holidays and things like that. So mm -hmm. what was that like as, um, you know, step siblings having a stepsister not really involved and, and then even some of some behaviors with your stepbrother that would cause conflict with you guys. So um, not just his behavior, theirs too. So well, I'm not, it's not picking on Luke Day. So can you share like what it's like when you're dealing with, because we have a lot of people that have a blended family and maybe they're being alienated from a child or the child's not around, but there's other kids in the home. So what was that like internally for you guys? How did that impact you as children? And what would you suggest or what advice would you give to parents or kids watching this in that kind of situation? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is like, so there was two and two. Don't gang up. <laughs> don't just pair with your blood siblings. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, don't align just like completely and don't have like two separate battles like always being fought. Yeah. That'd be my biggest piece of advice. <laughs> but also like, I know with our stepsister, we would, my mom does what she preaches. She, we would show up. So when she was doing things, she would make Jensen and I come and show up. And sometimes we'd go to, like, her track meets or something else, and sometimes she literally would not talk to us. She'd yeah. walk right by us and not talk to us, which was really weird for, like, Jensen and I, because we always had, like, a really good sister relationship. And to know that we had someone else in our family and a sister that, like, didn't really want to talk to us at the beginning, which is, like, completely changed now. Yeah. 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 But it was weird when we first started. <laughs> so, and what's it like now? Um, now it's... It's pretty good. I feel like a few years back, um, me and her started like Snapchatting. And so that was like a very yeah. casual way to start a friendship because it was just like, we would just be talking about what we were doing that day without any pressure of like forced replies back or like, I don't know, we could just send like a like selfie back to each other. So it was yeah. like still communication without like the <laughs> harshness of like being, having to keep a conversation going. Mm -hmm. Which sounds weird to use Snapchat as like your main mode of communication to someone, but like yeah. it worked for us. That's the way the kids communicate today. And so I hope you're picking up what Savannah and Jensen are dropping down is that, you know, at first it was challenging and 
your were your feelings hurt? Like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just we would also give up part of our day to go or support her. Part or of like, our week. Sometimes yeah. we would go all the way to Fresno and spend a couple nights or to Oregon and right, stuff yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, we did a lot of that, and um, and they, the girls, really shifted out of being like. Um, feeling hurt and wounded by really stepping into an empowered place and leading as a bridge. So you guys have talked to me or heard me talk about the bridge and sometimes the bridge, maybe a step sibling, a, a, the kids reaching out and mm -hmm. I mean, they, they would cry and their feelings would be hurt and things like that. And why is it like this? And, and, um, and this is the way with half siblings too. I mean, I grew up in a alienating environment and I didn't get to know any of my siblings until I was an adult. And, um, uh, any of my half siblings and you know it was really hard on my half siblings right they had my dad and yet they didn't really have my dad because he was always pining for his other children he didn't have and then we didn't have our dad and we were always secretly pining for our dad so there's all of this chaos and conflict that goes on and sometimes it's the kids that end up bridging the gap and so Savannah reaching out on snapchat and really staying in constant communication just you know the way the kids communicate today kept that door that we kicked open open for Anna to really fold back in and making it easy you heard me talk about this a lot but making it easy for these children to fold back into you which means there's no rehashing the past and digging up all the garbage and you made me feel bad and blah 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 it's just a hundred percent accepting a hundred percent of the time in our household is her household and you know, Christmas morning last year was our very first Christmas that all four of the children opened presents together and we had matching jammies and we all had Christmas morning together last year and it really was magical. And Christmas clearly is, you know, the holidays starting, <laughs> <laughs> starting with Halloween all the way through New Year's, my favorite time of year. And I really love Christmas and Christmas morning at our house is, is a lot of fun. And whoever is here is part of the family. And, and so I, I just want to say thank you, Savannah and Jensen, for making it easy for Anna and Luke to really fold in. And, and Luke, we've had 50% of the time since pretty much Rob and I have been together. And, um, but really giving Anna that soft place to land was really, really important. And, and it wouldn't have been possible without you guys, right? And in a lot of blended families, there's a lot of conflict still. And there's a lot of my kids, your kids. And we still deal with that too. And you're playing favorites and those kinds of things. I mean, it's human nature and kids are like that. And kids will naturally split and pit parents against each other. That's just what they do. And at the same time, you know, your leadership, how you invoke leadership in your children, how you lead by example, will manifest in how they lead their friends, their siblings, your alienated children or alienated stepchildren. It's really important. So, you know, I uh, this isn't scripted, by the way. They were like, what are we gonna talk about? I'm like, I don't know. We're just gonna talk about whatever comes to me because that's how we do or comes to us. That's how we do Facebook Live around here. And so I just love how that naturally unfolded. And I hope that you are getting value out of this and hearing from the voices of kids that have dealt with you know, their parents being split. Um, these guys have lived by coastal. So mm -hmm. let's talk, we're gonna talk not about the holidays right now. So many people tell me, you know, um, I wanna move away, I can't share parenting, I need full custody, the other parent wants to move away and it creates this whole split in this divide. And you know, we were doing online school before it was cool and before it was COVID cool. It's and not cool. I know, before it was COVID. <laughs> required how about that and they started to go to school online when their stepdad and i got married and savannah said well i want to go to school online i want to live in california and in north carolina and i capitalized on that opportunity and what they probably didn't even realize then which was really good for me was their dad was dating an online school teacher at the time so he was kind of he put himself kind of in a double bind and he couldn't really say no so we were able to go to i was able to move here full time i was going back and forth and they started going back and forth. And so we've always shared 50-50 custody, or mostly 50-50 um, through the years, even when I was traveling and then they started traveling. So help people understand how that works for you, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because it wasn't always perfect, but mm -mm. yeah. Yeah, I think um, 
eventually we got to a place where we were doing two weeks here, two weeks there. Mm-hmm. So we were flying a lot. And then eventually, <laughs> so I did it for four years consistently. I did not. Yeah, she didn't. <laughs> but I stayed online all four years of my high school career, which mm-hmm. was very strange, obviously, back then. Now it seems almost normal or a new normal. But um, I think one thing was like, to me, it was always keeping constant communication with both parents too. Like you have to let them know what you're up to. Mm-hmm. Like you can't just like not talk to them for the two weeks and then also just listen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she did. But <laughs> so that that's great. Let me stop there. Yeah. Savannah likes to have constant communication. She's a little more like pay attention to me. I'm here. Don't forget about me. Jensen, on the other hand, from birth, like, would <laughs> kind of feed around in the background. I mean, a few times I got in the car and was like, oh, shit, where's Jensen, right? Like, she's still in the playroom, right? You're going to go with the little kid, right? So very different perspectives. Mm-hmm. So I think what's really important to hear is feed the needs of your children what they need, not what you need. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes I'm like, um, hello, mommy needs a little love here. Are you still alive? Right. And, uh, but to not take that personally, Mm -hmm. if you don't hear from one of your children, maybe they're just not a communicative kid. Don't take that personally. And the one that needs all the attention, make sure you're paying attention to them. Like parent your children into their love language and not necessarily yours. And so have a good idea what that is or figure it out pretty quickly. If you don't know, buy the book. There's a wonderful book called The Five Love Languages for Children. You can take and the quiz online. You can take free. the quiz yeah. online for free. Yeah. And and know what your kids need from you. And ask. You know, if you yeah. have some communication with your children, ask them what makes you feel loved. And you know, some alienated kids will say, I don't know, or nothing or whatever, but maybe it's something if you have some connection that you can communicate or do with them together or take the test and say, hey, this is what I came up with. What, what, what do you think? Right. And, you know, find ways to connect with your kids and to bond. And if they don't respond, don't take it personally. You just never know what's going on, but it's important for you to communicate one way. So thank you. That was very, uh, that was very good. These two kids are very different. My older yes. sister and I are very different too. And, um, our mom would parent the, us the opposite way, with the way we needed to be parented, and that was very frustrating for both of us. Um, also, you as parents are very different. Like, you versus yes. my, our dad. So our yeah. dad is very much like our dad. Both of you guys send us, like, cards and, like, boxes of, like, goodies for holidays and stuff like that if we're apart. But, like, our dad really shows up in the way that, like... His love language. He, yeah, his love language <laughs> is, like... He, yeah. like he likes to buy us things like he's buy, <laughs> not buying our love but that's just how he shows it is like mm-hmm. he shows up and he'll buy you what you need or like or he'll cook or he'll do some housework that needs to get done for you. <laughs> or, or it's, I heard you mention this like four months ago I didn't forget yeah <laughs> here it is here. yeah like, oh. or it's like if you mention oh I really liked this kind of cookie you have like six boxes of those <laughs> Like you're already comes later. <laughs> True. Yeah. So like that's just how our dad is more so than like he does talk to us a lot. I talk to our dad like almost every day, even when we're apart. <laughs> but like you don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's not a super communicative person. Yeah. Right. I think the key phrase there was I talk to our dad a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do I love you? On the spot. On the spot. <laughs> oh, 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 no. at me. <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I feel like what was hard for you is when we left your physical house yeah. to go to college. Is I feel like you're very big on per, like physical touch and yeah. talking. So like you like to give us hugs and you like <laughs> she likes to wake us up in the morning by throwing the dogs. Up. Yeah, she loves <laughs> she loves to bust into the bedroom and she's like, "Good morning." It's like seven thirty. What's morning. going on? <laughs> like sleeping. Seven <laughs> thirty's late. <laughs> no. no, not for any kids <laughs> out there. Not That's for college. So funny. Yeah. So if there is any kids watching, like just kind of know how your parents kind of work. I don't know mm-hmm. if any alienated kids are like recovered they sometimes, kids. Yeah. Yeah. They, they come to our groups. We have some in some of the groups, and this is this is live in in some of the groups too. And oh, I see my stepmom is there. Hi, Mama Carol. Hi, Oma. Hi, Oma. Oma. <laughs> Oma. Um, did you have family meetings in high school? How was it challenging? If it was. Ooh, Kathy asking about family meetings. Family meetings for me personally normally didn't happen unless I did something really bad. <laughs> I don't think I had any family meetings. Probably not. 
Actually, family meetings usually for us were, they weren't really that necessary because we all, um, it's not necessarily a, a punishment thing um, is what Jensen's trying to get at, but <laughs> family meetings is where we all kind of, we didn't have like a super formal one, but where we decided yeah. like, okay, what are we doing this weekend? Are we doing soccer? Are we going there together? Are we doing something separate? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Oh, like those kind of meetings. Those kinds of meetings, yeah. So yeah. it wasn't really like a scheduled meeting. It was just like if we all happen to be in the same room at the same time, it's like bring it up and yeah, address yeah. it. Make it natural. Don't make it feel like a chore or like a job. Um, it should just be something that unfolds naturally, not necessarily something that is like we need to talk about this at this time. Yeah. Also, just have like open communication about it, like something. Or also come with a plan. So, mm -hmm. right, Jensen had learned this. She would never come with plans. Of, she'd be like, "I'm doing this this week," and then be like, "How are you doing that?" So this is a great. This is a great <laughs> yeah. comment. So Jensen would always have plans of what she was going to do, but never have plans on how she was going to get there and how she was going to get home. So. For our family meeting stuff was really like, what's the plan? We're fine if you want to do it, but what's the what's the what are the logistics around it? So it was usually like, well, I don't know, let's figure that out. It's like, no, we need to figure that out now. Especially we have four kids, or yeah, four kids doing four different things. We had a track kid, a soccer kid, um, and then two kids in the entertainment world, but not necessarily doing the same thing. So lots of different things. Jensen did stuff in in theater, and Savannah did stuff in actually in the entertainment world um, by having um, interviewing uh, young celebrities and mm -hmm. things of that nature. So sometimes we were in four separate directions at the same time. So our family meetings were really like, okay, this weekend we have four different things going on at the same time. How are we gonna divide ourselves into four different you know people to make yeah. sure everybody got where they were. And sometimes yeah. it would literally be like, you're going to have to go chill at a Starbucks two hours before your thing starts because yep. we got to <laughs> drop you off here and then run over here. Yeah. Exactly. So then go get this kid on time and then we'll pick you, we'll swim by and pick you back up. Be ready outside by this time. So yeah, I think that was kind of our family meetings were just like kind of having to plan that. Drop off and pick up spots are important. Know what they are <laughs> and stick to them. Here's a question. So um, what do you recommend or how do you feel is the best way to reach an alienated child if parent is blocked on all social media and cell phone? Mm -hmm. What would be a way to communicate with the alienated child? Hold on. If they have said, don't contact them. Only way to send a message is via text to their other parent's home. It's been 16 months and I've been alienated from my 16 year old son and another holiday without him. Dad face. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna answer. And then um, you guys can answer from a kid's perspective. So um, there's a couple things, and in, in, you may have already heard me say this. Um, if you can buy your kid's name, domain name, buy their kid's domain name and create a website, keep it clean and friendly and um, one-way communication, but post things about your child to your child. Um, there, everybody Googles their name, and your child will find it. The other thing I would do is create another account and um, communicate with your child via that account and um, see if you can kick the door open and create some connection there. Um, also, send messages to the other parent's phone via text, even if it's going to their phone, and keep a record of it on your phone. So some people say, well, I don't wanna send, I don't wanna communicate with my ex, blah, blah, blah. They're not gonna give it to him anyway, so what's the point? The point is for you to keep a record and for you to let your child know that you're communicating with them. You know, one of the things with my dad, when I really fully reunited with my dad, was I believed that my dad wasn't like sending us things for Christmas and you know, he just didn't really care and that just simply wasn't true. And my stepmom actually was the one who shared information with me mainly because I you know, made them do it. My dad didn't really want to. He was like, it doesn't worry, don't worry about it, it's water under the bridge. And I was like, no, but I wanna know, I wanna see. And um, my stepmom was able to show me. So, um, and because I asked. So for the stepmoms out there, don't take this as an opportunity as a free license to show a bunch of crap about the other parent. I literally had to ask quite a bit to get the information. So um, I was probably pretty demanding. And um, I wanted to know, and I was much older then. 
So that's my advice. Create ways to communicate with your child. Send stuff in the mail. That may be the only way. And you never know. The child might check the mail when the other parent isn't at home. But always be communicating. There's something that energetically happens for you also by communicating unconditional love on a one-way street. So sending things, sending gift cards or, you know, create an email, create a fake uh, account, send that email to the child in that account, and then start sending them stuff to that email. They'll access it. Okay? What are your thoughts? I would say show up physically. Oh, um, that's unless okay. unless there is a restraining order. Exactly. Uh, don't break that. That will get you in all kinds of trouble. Um, <laughs> Do you want to be a coach? I'm just kidding. <laughs> that also may be harder during COVID, though. Yeah. Right. So obviously, if your kid plays sports, you can't go to their sporting events mm -hmm. because either sports aren't happening or parents can't even attend. So yeah, I think that's one way because like that's what we did for our stepsister was like we all showed up and would show up for her, but. I also think the email thing is a good idea, especially if there's a gift card to it. The kid's going to, if you spend them $15 at Starbucks, they're going to open it hey. and go spend that $15 at Starbucks. So yeah, we have a lot of parents that yeah. have done that, um, which will give me an opportunity now to give a little plug for Reunited. All of our courses right now, the Reunited, the 10-week course, and Higher Purpose Parenting are on sale right now for 50% off through Cyber Monday. So if you have the opportunity, um, uh, my team will put the link in the comments below. Click on the link and the 50% the off code is THANKFUL, all capital letters, and sign up for one of the classes. You get automatic access immediately and you can start taking the content. Um, the Reunited class, for those of you who have teenagers or young adult children, the Reunited class is chock full of tons and tons and tons and tons of things that you can do to reunite with your teens and your adult children. A lot of the parents that have taken that class already have already reunited with their kids. Some of them decades of no contact following these tips and these skills and these tools and consistency is queen or king. Make sure that you're consistently communicating with your children even if it's just one way. And don't forget it's unconditional love. You're not getting something from them, you're giving something to them. And it may be the only unconditional love or love that they're feeling and experiencing, depending on the level of, of pathology with the other parent and how they're isolated, especially during COVID. So if you can show up, always show up, always go to all of the games, unless you're, you're, there's a restraining order, always go. It doesn't matter if they say they don't want you there and it's creepy and all of that is nonsense. They 100% want you there. And if you don't know my story about my dad and running track, watch some of our other videos on here. I've shared that story many times about how important it was for my dad to show up. And, and it was just one time and it had a meaningful impact on my life. And um, I can only imagine how so much sooner we would have fully reunited had he shown up more often. So showing up is really important. Do these things. If your mindset when you hear this is, it's not gonna work for me, then I highly recommend higher purpose parenting because you're stuck in a negative mindset in a limiting belief that nothing's going to work and it's a victim mindset. And I really truly believe that there are no victims, only volunteers, and your life is a manifestation of what you believe you deserve unconsciously. And so if you clean up your negative data loop of this isn't gonna work, and you start focusing on what you actually want and that it works, you'd be amazed at how many shifts you'll have in your life and how you'll get your children to fold back into you. You're the chosen parent, your children love you. They want you to do this work. They want you to step, step up. They want you to love them unconditionally and they want you to show up consistently in messaging and also in live. Somebody asked, hi ladies, I missed the very beginning. Don't worry, it's being recorded. You can watch it as many times as you want. How old are your girls? 22 and 20. <laughs> yeah, um, we're both in college. Mm -hmm. Yes. Show up physically even if they don't want you there. Yes, show yeah. up physically. They do want you there. Children who say you don't want you, uh, don't want you there, that's not true. They absolutely 100% want you there. They're testing you. They're doing what the other parent is telling them that they want you them to say and do, and they want you there. They want to know that you love them unconditionally. Show up. They want you there. And if you do have step siblings or something like that, make them show up. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what made our stepsister like really reach out to us too, was like we showed her that we wanted a relationship with her more so than like our parents forcing us to do it. Like mm -hmm. we were there. We even traveled to her college to go see her run mm -hmm. there and stuff. And 
when we started talking, it was after we had gone to visit her. And that was really when she started talking to me because I think she realized, oh, we have a lot in common, actually. We were both in college. We were both kind of doing the same kinds of things. So that gave her an in and a reason to talk. So mm -hmm. it made it really easy for her to talk to me. Um, I kind of want to say something off of that. It's a lot easier for um, a stepchild or just your alienated child to connect with someone their age first mm -hmm. and then sort of fold into the relationship. <laughs> That's Rob. We're doing a Facebook Live, so, um, big dad's home. <laughs> Speaking of. Um, so, uh, sorry for that disruption. Uh, yes, it's easier, Jensen was saying, to reunite or connect with kids their own age, and they make it easier for the kids to fold back in. Um, when you show, what if you show up personally, but your child is too afraid to open the door? Um, that's okay. You're not doing it for anything in return. You're showing up to let your child know that you're there. When um, I was young, my dad, my mom was on a rant on a Christmas Eve talking about, you know, we're not gonna have Christmas and blah, blah, blah. And when I was little and my dad showed up with my grandparents and he had made bunk beds for my sister and I, and he'd made a bike for my brother. And um, after we had heard this big rant about how um, my dad, you know, didn't love us and we weren't gonna have any, we didn't have any money and all blah, 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 um, he showed up. So. It matters. Show up. We didn't get to really talk to him or connect with him or anything. And, you know, I saw my grandmother was crying and, you know, it meant a lot that they showed up. So, yes, show up, even if he's too afraid or she's too afraid to open the door. Could you explain, I think Dorsey stated, by the child's name to communicate. Yes, by the domain name. So go to GoDaddy, Bluehost, any of those things and buy, you know, um, johnnysmith.com or whatever your child's name is, .com. Buy their domain name and create, you can create a free website on there. And it's so easy to create a website. Now, it doesn't have to be anything big and fancy, but create something to communicate with your child that especially if you have no contact or you your child has disappeared we deal with a lot of abductions you know they may look up might look up their name and find find you and find their information on the internet um that show that happened to me i showed up and my daughter was too afraid to open the door that's okay she still saw you there and it meant a lot to her that you were there um Conscious co-parenting. I got married again and we had another child. How do I make it easier to meet their little brother when this time comes? Should I keep them separate from him initially in order to ease them into it? No. Rip the band-aid off and jump right in. They're curious and they want to know their other siblings. They're going to be um, uncomfortable. They'll probably feel a little jealous, like, you know, when we met our little siblings, the first time I saw my three youngest siblings was in the grocery store. My stepmom was in the grocery store with my dad's sister, my aunt, and I remember being super excited. I think the little, my little sister was just a baby and she was in the cart, and I remember like, oh my God, you know, look out, they're so little, and they were really cute, and, um, you know, my mom wasn't very nice, and, you know, we couldn't really interact with them, but I remember how giddy I was to actually see that I had these tiny little siblings and then even when I went to see my dad when I was 18 you know it was I mean they were kind of annoying because they were little and I was a teenager and at the same time I was really happy to have like little siblings so I would say when the time comes just introduce the the child don't over protect or under you know just make it easy don't make a big whoop-de-doo in a production of anything you want to make it easy for the kids to fold back in as if no time has passed, as if they have been there the whole time. Just make it easy. Does that make I sense? Guess, yeah, I was gonna suggest like something else to make it easy is like to have a reason. Like, don't just be mm -hmm. like, "Do you want to come over for dinner?" Be like, "We have some people coming over. Like, your little brother or your sibling has a birthday party, or like some kind of event, something like that." So the focus isn't on just that kid coming over, so mm -hmm. that kid can like kind of no be pressure. able to be there. No yeah, pressure. without Good. the pressure being like, "So and so's coming over." everyone pay attention to them because that's not really what they want I don't think right <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense that makes perfect sense good do you have any last little we've been on for a while any um, last little nuggets of advice that you could give to um, parents watching that have lost contact with um, with their children and they're experiencing alienation and they're just really struggling with what to do and how to communicate with their kids 
Um, I do. Um, don't lose hope. Keep fighting. Um, it's worth it. Your kids are worth it. And your relationship with your kids is worth it. Yeah. And it won't get better unless you actually do keep talking to, or communicating with them and showing up for them. Mm -hmm. They're not going to magically one day wake up and be like, oh, today's the day if you haven't been talking to them. Yeah, you have to do the work, and it does pay off. Yeah. Well, they might magically wake up one day, but it makes it a lot easier when they do <laughs> if you stay in contact with them. Yeah. Yeah. Make it easy. Like, one day maybe they'll wake up and they'll be like, I do want to talk to my other parent. But if you are, if you message them, that's perfect opportunity. They can message you back without a pressure of them having to message you first. I have a question for you. When Dad and I are bitching about each other mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. what would you us do, rather do instead? Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Go go talk about it to someone else. <laughs> right? Yes. We're not perfect. We do it. It's annoying, and so. You know, when we're doing it, this is what your kids want. They want you to shut up, stop doing it, and go talk to somebody else. They're not your friends, they're your children, and they love the other parent. Um, what about when you're bitching about your other parent to your mom or your dad? What should your parent do? Shut it down. Yeah. Uh -huh. Shut it down. Don't engage, like the other parent should not be there and be like, yeah, you're right. Like, don't back them up in that way because mm -hmm. that doesn't help anybody. <laughs> Even if you do agree, what would be don't helpful? sit there. Shut it down. But what if you're really having a struggle? What would be helpful? Listen. Like, li okay, listen from the parent that you're, you're struggling with the parent. What would oh. be helpful? Um, listen to what the kid has to say without necessarily interjecting your experience with yeah. them. N keep it about them. Don't bring your own personal um, anger into it because it's not about that. It's about your kid. It's not about you. Yeah. Good. Also, just like base, doing like a basic coaching thing of just repeating back what you're hearing instead of necessarily giving advice or saying your opinion. So uh, active take, listening. Yeah. Take what they're saying and repeat it back to them. Because sometimes kids just say things like I say things and then not, it'll get repeated back to me. And what? I'm like, well, that's not what I meant. <laughs> right. So also just repeating it back to them may let them pause and be like, well, no. Well, no. That was a little harsh or something like that. So don't twist their words either. Just literally give them to it like it was, like mm -hmm. how they said it, and let them lead the conversation if you don't stop them immediately. Excellent. I think we've done a pretty good job, Dad and I, um, raising two pretty conscious kids. And um, so uh, thank you so much, Savannah, my beloved, and Jensen, my beloved beautiful baby girls and for taking time on your Wednesday before Thanksgiving and sharing from your heart and being real and honest and um, really helping the parents that that come into our world through Facebook Live and that will watch this video as many times as you want and um, uh, I really appreciate it. it I had no idea where what they were gonna say or where this conversation was gonna go so I really appreciate you being honest and being here for for our listeners and for the parents and the kids that are watching this. And hopefully you guys have gotten some good advice and some little nuggets that you can take and tuck some love down into your heart. Know that your children love you. My kids are telling you your children love you. I'm telling you your children love you despite what they say and how they're acting. They do love you and they really need you to show up for them. So during this holiday season, if you need to fill up your cup, which you probably do because you cannot you cannot give from an empty cup. Fill up your cup and give from your saucer. Go seek unconditional love from your friends and family and or the classes or some place. Find places to fill up your heart so that you can give to your children with abundance from your saucer and not your cup. So with that being said, I want to say thank you all for joining us today live. Happy Thanksgiving for those of you that celebrate in the U.S. and around the world. Um, I really, really appreciate you showing up today. So thanks so much, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, and we'll be coming back at you live sometime during the holidays again. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We will. I mean, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, and Bye. peace in, so you can have peace out, my friends. Happy holidays.